Hello again, I'm Ross Fossler, a member of the technical staff here at Cypress Semiconductor. This is part two of getting started with PSOC 3, and I'm going to start off this video by creating a project in uh, PSOC Creator. It is a simple project that uh, just blinks an LED in a manner undoubtedly characteristic of a typical MCU. And then uh, a little bit later, I'm going to uh, blink the LED a little bit differently that's uh, slightly out of character for a typical MCU, but is more in character for PSOC. So without further ado, as I mentioned in part one, I'm going to throw out the slides and get right started into uh, creating project. The first thing I'm going to need to do is get PSOC Creator going. This is a design tool to uh, program PSOC 3 and PSOC 5. Once PSOC Creator is up, I'm going to create a new project a PSAC 3 project. I'm going to give it a useful name, my first project. Okay. PSAC Creator has created a blank project for me. So the first part of this project, I'm going to blink an LED through firmware. To blink an LED, of course, I'm going to need a digital output pin. And I'm going to go to my component catalog where you can see various uh, components and classes of components um, such as ADCs and DACs and other functions. I need an output pin. I'm going to drag that to my worksheet and drop it. This pin is by default configured to be controlled by hardware. So I'm going to reconfigure that pin. I am going to change it from hardware control to operate from firmware and this tells PSOC Creator that it's now controlled by firmware. I'm going to give it a useful name. I'm going to call it LED1. And OK. Creator now knows that I have an output pin. Um, it doesn't know yet what pin that really relates to in the package. So I'm going to go to the package view and I can see I've got an LED here. And I need to associate that to a physical pin. And I'm going to go select a port. And there it is. I'm going to go to the build menu and generate my application. PSAC Creator will generate a handful of useful uh, include files and source files, which will include a number of APIs. In addition, it, it generated files associated to the pin I just placed. I'm going to go to main and I'm going to write code to control that pin. I've just written my firmware. It, uh, the firmware basically, for every loop of main, increments a counter. When the counter overflows, it toggles the LED. From the build menu, I am going to build my first project. And if I've done everything correctly, it should succeed. And with the project being successfully built, um, I'd like to go ahead and uh, program this into a board. I can uh, do this a couple of ways. I can uh, go to my debug menu and program, or I have the option of selecting it right from the shortcut here. So I'm going to go ahead and just do it from the menu first. Hit program. And this again, I'm assuming I've connected the, you've, you've connected your board. I have connected my uh, demonstration board. You can see down here it's programming. It's finished. I removed and reapplied power to my demo board. As you can see, the LED is blinking under firmware control, like any typical microcontroller can do. Next, I will do something different, something that is not characteristic of an MCU. What I am doing is creating two square waves of slightly different periods mixed with an XOR gate. 
What that achieves is a beat harmonic, which I'm going to modulate on my LEDs. And I'm going to set my PWMs to be enabled and, and not in reset. And my PWMs need a clock. And then I'm going to wire my design together. I need to configure my clock to a reasonable value. We're going to choose 8 kilohertz. And now I need to assign my pins to physical pins on the demonstration board. I'm choosing pins on port 4, bits 0 through 3. To generate my application. In this design, I need to change the code a little bit to initialize the PWMs. Then I can rebuild my application. And now I'm going to go ahead and program my uh, development board. And here you can see the results. As you can see, the LED on the left is the original control scheme blinking through the 8051 processor. The LEDs on the right are blinking, or you might uh, say breathing on and off, completely separate from the CPU. Thus, the, uh, the flexibility and the programmability truly make PSOC 3A a unique device. Well, thank you for joining me in this demonstration. Again, if you want more information about PSOC 3, you can go to www.cypress.com go slash PSOC 3.